Now that we've been able to work on most of the routes that can help us to create, read, and update our orders, we're going to go ahead and implement that route for updating and order status. So we have that route situated right here, and we're going to go ahead and implement its logic. Now we need some sort of way to accept data that comes to the API. So we're going to create a model that's going to only have that one field of the order status that we're going to update. So we're going to come right at the top of our code, and I'm going to create that order status model. So I'll come and say, Order. So this is actually going to be our order status model. So we shall call it the order status model. This is going to have our order namespace. So we're going to create this model from our order namespace. I'll say order namespace. So then we shall give this a name. So I'm just going to call it order, order status. Right after giving it a name, we're going to go ahead and specify the various fields that are going to form this model. So we're going to say uh, our field is going to be the order. Order status. Now, since this is going to be a field, we need to specify which kind of field it's going to be. So, we need to call it fields, then it's going to be a string field. So, we need to say fields.string, and then we're going to give a description. So, it can provide uh, actually, we need to say required is equal to true. Now, we're going to also give a description. So, I can come right here and say that our description is going to be equal to. So, this is going to be a order, order status. So this is, this is going to be an enum field, and we're going to also specify that enum is going to be equal to the list of the order statuses that we have. For example, we have pendings, we have uh, in transit, so this is going to be in transit. So I'm going to take this to transit. We're also going to have uh, delivered, so this is going to be delivered. So let me correct this, so this will be delivered. Now what we're going to need is an enum that uh, one of the keys that belong to our enum, for example, pending, in transit, and deliver, that's what we're going to actually use to update our order status. So we need to go right to this route, and the first thing I'll do is to specify which kind of data we're expecting. Just going to come and decorate our method, sorry for this, so it's going to be at order, so it's going to be at order namespace. Oops. In this case, we're going to say expect, since we are expecting data from our API. Then we shall specify that we need data from our order status model. Now, after that, then we're going to access our data via, so we're going to say that our data is going to be equal to our order namespace. Actually, it's going to be our order namespace. But in this case, we shall say the payload. So we need to access this via the payload. And after accessing this data, then we're going to go ahead and basically query for that specific order that you want to update. So in this case, I'll say order to update. So this will be order update and this is going to be equal to so we're going to query for this so shall say order and i'll say dot since we wrote our convenience method to get it by id i've just called it by id and in this file we need to get this by the order id that we passed within our function now right after doing that i'll go ahead and update this with the order status that we put from our payload so i'll do this with saying order so this is going to be our order to update dot then in this case, we shall specify that what we want to update is our order status. And then we shall update it to what we get from our payload. So I'll say this is going to be data. And then we shall access this with order status. So since this is a dictionary, we use the key to access the value of that specific dictionary. So in this case, we're going to access the order status. And right after update, update getting the order status, then we're going to go ahead and basically return uh, actually save this to the database and then be able to return our response. So to do this, I'm just going to come and say db dot session. So it's going to be db dot session. Then we need finally saving it to our database and then we shall come right here and return our response. Just going to come and say return. We're going to return our order to update and then we shall return an HTTP status code. One. So I'll just say HTTP status. Now we need some way of being able to return this object as a JSON object. So I'll just come right here and I'll decorate our function with at. In this case, we're going to say order namespace dot marshal with. So in this case, we're going to say marshal with, and then we shall specify that we want to marshal with our order model. So right after doing this, I'm going to go ahead and test this route. Now I also need this to be protected. So I'll just come and say at. In this case, we're going to have JWT required. So we're going to have this protected as well. Now, when I go back to Insomnia here, we're going to create a new request. So this new request is going to be a request. So I'll say this is going to be for updating 
and that status this is going to be update and for that status and then right after doing this i'll specify that our method is going to be patch and then i'll specify that our board is going to be in terms of json so i'll go ahead and create this now after creating this i'm just going to come right here and i'll give our our route so in this case our route is going to be local cost 5000 and then i'll say slash so i need to go and copy the route so i'll come to our code right here in my visual studio code and i'm going to copy the endpoint so this is going to be this endpoint so i'll come right back to our insom right here and i'll provide this endpoint so this is going to take in the order id so for example in case you want to update an order so i need its id so i'm just going to come and get all of that I'm going to send this now we have our token expired so i'll just come right here to get in all orders and it seems like we have only two orders for two and three so what i'm going to do is actually to generate a new jwt so i'll come and generate a new jwt and right after i'll copy this jwt now we require this as well if you we want to access all orders so let's say try to get all orders when i try to get all orders we have an old jwt for example if i say they are telling us our token has expired so i'll place in the new token so i'll just come right here place in the new token and send now this is going to return only orders with id of two and three what i'm going to do in this case is to uh, be able to update that one the order status of that one with id of two so i'll just come right here and what i'll do is to say update an order status so i'll come and provide an authorization header this is going to be authorization and then right in here i'll say here i'm going to have our token so right after here i'm just going to come to our json pack and then i'll specify that we're going to have our the status so in this case we're going to have order status and right here we, should, we are going to have our order status so for example let's say our order is in transit so we can just come right here and say that our order is going to be in transit now let's try to send this so we're going to specify that our order is going to, our order id is going to be of id 2 so when i try to send this uh, right now we see not found seem like we made a mistake of some sort but let's see so our route is status slash int order id so that means you don't have the forward slash i'll just remove it now and then you try to send this actually see not found so this is on the uh, slash orders endpoint that's why it's not working so i'll basically come right here and send it on slash uh, orders and then slash order status and then the id so when i send this we now see that our order status has been updated successfully all right so now we've implemented most of our routes for orders and authentication and now we're going to look at how we can be able to handle most of the errors that we shall be facing so flash Press x provides us with uh, very many ways to handle these errors we can be able to use work Zoop, which comes with plus because plus depends on it you can even use a bot you can actually even use the api handler method provided by flash Press x so let's look at how we can use our API handler method. So we need to go within our init.py file, uh, that's in the entry point of our application. And then right here as well, we're going to create our custom error handlers. So custom error handlers are just going to take care of most of the default error handlers we've been having. For example, the 404 not found error handler. So I'm just going to come right here and use that error handler, I mean our error handler method i'll just say at in this case i'll say api dot in this case i'm going to say error handler and then this takes in an exception so we're going to use worksoup's exception classes so all these exception classes actually inherit from the http exception class that comes from worksoup so i'm just going to come at the top of our code and i'm going to import some of those classes so i'm going to say from worksoup dot exception in this case, I'm going to import the first one is going to be the not found exception. So I'll say not found. And after importing not found, then we need to carry out or write our custom error handler for a 404 not found error. So I'm just going to come right here and what I'll do is to add our not found. So this is actually going to be not found. And I'm going to go ahead and write a function that's going to basically carry out this. So I'm just going to come right here and say not found so this is going to take in a parameter and in this case this parameter is going to be the error so right after getting the error then we shall specify what to return in this case i'm just going to return a response so in this response is going to have our error and then our error is going to be a message so in this case we shall just say not not found 
And then we shall also have to specify the status code which we shall return. So we're going to return an HTTP status code of 404. Now let's also try for api.errorhandler. So we're going to create one for the method not allowed. So it's going to be the same process. So I'll just say at api.errorhandler. So let's say error handler. And in this case, we're actually going to specify that this is going to be a method not allowed. So I'll import that from uh, work so I'll just come right here and say method not allowed. So right here I'll just come and also provide method not allowed. So let's say in this case we're going to provide method not allowed. So I'll create a function and this function is actually going to be method not allowed. So I'll just call it method not allowed. So this is going to take in an error and it will return a response. So let's say return and in this case it's going to return a response. So I'll say error and then here we shall have a method not allowed. So in this case, I'm going to say method not allowed. So once we have this, then I can specify the status code as well. For example, this is going to be a 405 error. So once we have this, then I can go ahead and save. So when I save this, I'm going to go and basically make a request just to test out our custom error handlers. So let's say we wanted to update the order status over of an order that does not exist. So when you go to our UI right here, so let's say you want to uh, update the order status of ID 21. So let's say we send this request. Right now we see an error handler and the message basically telling us that the requested URL was not found. Therefore our error handlers are working. Let's also try to send this with maybe a patch, a put request or a post request. Let's actually try with a post request. So when you try this and say, right now we see 405 not uh, allowed and then the clue which basically tells us that the method is not uh, allowed for this requested URL. Now let's also go ahead and touch some of our errors. So for example, if we try to sign up our user, we use our email and our username. But if the user exists with certain email, we expect to, to actually return an error. And in this case, we never did it. So for example, if I went to uh, create new user account endpoint and I signed up a user. Right now we see that we are actually supposed to return a 409 conflict, but this is by default supposed to return this SQL alchemy integrity error. Now let's look at how we can be able to catch this error. So I'm just going to come within our code. So I'm going to come uh, within our views of the authentication. So I'm just going to come within our authentication views right here. And what I'll do is to actually make this user uh, check if this user exists. So actually where are we going to sign up a user right here? We're going to be able to catch the error that is returned in case a, a user of that email exists. So we have a unique constraint on our email field in our database and this is actually going, not going to allow us to create a user with that specific email. So I'm just going to come right here and what I'll do is to add a try catch block or a try accept block in this case. So I'll just say try in this case, I'll add all of the code for creating a new user. So I'll just write all of these and add it to our try block. And then within our try block, I'm also going to write an accept block that's going to accept this exception. So I'll just come right here and say accept. And then I'm going to accept all exceptions that may arise in case this user is not created. So what I'll do is to just come and say accept exception as E. And in this case, I'll raise an error. So for example, I'm just going to come and raise. So I'm going to raise the, the conflict error. So I'm not really going to use what Zoob's error. So I'm just going to come right here and I'll say from, so in this case, I'm going to say from Maxub. So this is going to be from Maxub dot exceptions. I'm going to come and import our, so in this case, I'm going to import the conflict, which is a 409 error. So right, right after doing this, I'm just going to come right here and I'll simply raise the conflict. So I'll just say conflict. And this is actually going to be conflict. And once we have our conflict, we can give it a description. For example, I can say that this is going to be a user already exists. So I can say, actually I can even give a clue that the user with such an email. So I can return a doc, I mean an F string. This is going to have user with email and then we shall place in our email, which is actually going to be uh, data.email. So when we say data, and then we're going to give our email. So in this case, it's going to be uh, data.getemail, actually. It's going to be data. 
dot get and then we shall specify our email so once we do this then we can say uh, the user exists and hoping that this is going to work so in itself it's actually going to work so in itself this in this case we expect that the server is going to return a conflict and an error so when you try to send this so i'm going when i go back to our sign up i'm going to send this and when i send this uh, we actually see that our error handler is now working so right now we can see that the user with that email already exists all right so let's do the same thing for our login endpoint so i'm going to cast cam right here so we have our login endpoint so we have a condition that says that if a user is not none or if a user exists and if the password hash of the user actually matches the password in the the password hash if the password of the user matches our hash in the database then you need some way of creating a jwt which will return in the response they also want to catch that error that may arise if these credentials don't exist so just create come right here and what we shall do is to return an exception so i'll say return so what you want to return is a bad request error so i'll just import that from workflow so i'll just come right here and say import bad request so in this case we're going to have bad request and right after importing bad request then the next thing i'm going to do is raise this bad request so i'm just going to come and raise the bad request so instead of return we're actually going to raise a bad request so i'm going to say raise bad request and then right here i'll specify that we are going to return a bad request error so this is actually going to be uh, uh invalid username or password so we're going to actually say invalid username or password so in this case we're going to have invalid username or password so we expect that this is going to return an error of 400 as well as the message so let's try actually doing this so when i come right here try insomnia so i'm going to go to my insomnia and go to the route that generates a jwt so let's actually say we are logging in with the user of 123 at gmail.com who does not exist so we may send this we actually get a 40 400 error that says invalid username or password